All right, everyone, welcome to the Brad and Kyle channel. And today in this video, we're gonna be talking about your spare, specifically your corner pins, the ones we always have the most struggle with. Stay tuned. Listen, guys, if you haven't already get in, please get in our free giveaway. There's gonna be two winners. One winner is gonna get the Kyle package. One winner is gonna get the Brad package. And the packages are gonna be a free storm bowling ball, a signed jersey, game worn jersey that we have worn in competition, and a free one month membership click the link in the description and the bio wherever you're watching this the link will be there get in it's absolutely free we hope to see y'all in there peace all right so we've done some videos on spares we've talked a lot about spares we talk a lot about spares in our vlogs when we're on tour they're an important part of the game but let's step back for a second and let's go over like some basics about the spare game kyle what do you got for us yeah you know the question we get always if we ask you know what do you what do you want us to make videos on what do people need help with and picking the 10 pin for a right hander and picking the seven pin for a left hander is is always the topic of conversation people struggle with them yes for one we leave those the most yes yes so they're the ones that are the anything back row the seven eight nine or ten oftentimes tells us that we hit the pocket uh, but we didn't strike and so it's those that it, people think like, well, I'm getting to the pocket, I'm getting to the hole, I'm doing this, but I'm not carrying. And then they go up there and then they miss it. And then it affects like the rest of their game. Um, but the 10 and the seven, the corner pins, they are the hardest single pins to make because you do have less room than all the other single pins, but it's also the ones we leave the most often. Yeah, you, we have less room to pick it, but what we want to make clear in this video, and we're going to show you here in a second, is that you really have more room than you think. Yes. A lot of times people are trying to make the perfect shot at that 10 pin or the 7 pin because they feel like they have to hit you know, a very specific mark and they have to throw it perfect, and that's not the case. So we're going to bring you guys over here, actually, and show you how you, you may have more room than you initially thought. So we have a 10 pin set up here. Imagine it's all the way down the lane, but this is where the 10 pin's set up. And if we, this is our ball. So if our ball is going to pick the 10 pin, I want to demonstrate how much room you actually have. So if we take where the ball is on, we, obviously we can get all the way to the one board and we can see this ball covers, it'll hit the 10 pin. I can't really tell, but if we hit the one board, you know, the ball's about to fall off the lane, we're gonna hit the 10 pin. We can actually move this ball all the way to about board nine, ten ish, and it'll clip this ten pin. So I guess technically, right there. So we're on about board nine and a half, ten. We can all see that. So, with that being said, if we can hit nine and a half, ten with the ball. There's 39 boards on the lane. That means we have about 25% of the lane to hit over here, and we're gonna pick that 10 pin. That seems like a pretty large number. That is not a number where you gotta hit a specific board right on the money to pick a 10 pin. Yeah, you give a, dart, a really good dart player the option of like, oh, I just gotta hit 25% of this board. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna do it all day, every day. But our minds, bowler minds, are wired a little differently because our first shot is different than our second shot. For a dart player, it's all just the same thing, repetition. Whereas we spend so much time focusing on, well, how do I hook it? How do I get this ball motion? How do I do this? How do I make transition? Balls, arsenal, lane, patterns, all this stuff. But the spare game is definitely on the other side where it's just repetition, be a dart player, and take that 25% and be confident with it instead of thinking, oh, well, you know, these are really hard. I'll leave them all the time. I'm so unlucky, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's easier said than done, obviously, when we have the 10 pin right here as opposed to 60 feet down the lane. It is harder to hit that 25% mark further down the lane, but we're going to give you guys some tips here in a second to help make this 10 pin as easy as possible and to give you tips where you can repeat picking it without thinking you have to hit a very small area. So now that we have, I guess, not as scary of an idea on how to pick a 10 pin, Brad, what are some techniques or strategies that we use so we can hit that 25% part of the lane at the 10 pin? Uh, we'll talk about two things real quick. Uh, the bowling ball matters and companies make ball, they make reactive balls, which is most of the arsenal that these bowling ball companies make. And then you have a urethane ball and a plastic ball and both those balls are designed to hook less down the lane. A lot of people use urethane balls. I personally use a urethane ball. 
for uh, for spares, not because it just doesn't hook. I could use a, a, a normal reactive ball because of the roll I put on it, but I just like to know that the ball isn't reactive and that it, it, it's gonna go a little straighter naturally than a reactive ball. But if you're a high rev player, or if, you're, if you get the ball to hook a lot naturally, plastic balls are your friend, urethane balls are your friend. Don't even try to really um, throw a reactive ball at your corner pins or your spares in general because you want it to be as simple and repetitive as possible. So the lane conditions change, uh, the amount of hook you put on the ball, all that kind of stuff. So you want it to go basically as straight as possible. Plastic and urethane are, are great options, especially for high ref players. Uh, the second thing would be, and uh, my grip is not glued in my urethane ball, so when I demonstrate a spare, I'm going to use a reactive ball. But the second thing is your hand position. And if you're releasing the ball at a spare, and wherever your hand uh, is located, if the ball is spinning away from the pin, well then that's the direction the ball is going to go once it wants to hook which is away from the pin, which is not what you want because it makes it that much more difficult to make the 10 pin. So what I do is I almost throw a little bit of a backup, just barely. It's almost as if the ball is rolling over the thumb and the finger simultaneously, and it's just a dead end over and roll. But I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys both of those. I'm gonna shoot at a 10 pin with some roll on it, and it's gonna hook away from the 10 pin, and then It'll explain why we don't want to do that, and then I'll show you how I normally do it. Yeah, essentially what we're working on here is at the 10 pin releases, we just want to decrease that axis rotation. So this is a shot where you would have your normal axis rotation. Everything else is the same, alignment's the same, but the ball probably isn't going to pick the 10 pin because it's going to get offline. Yes, so here we go. Now that was, uh, we just had a six, seven split up there. But that was a pretty weak release. I didn't try and make the ball hook, but my hand was around it, and you can see by the other angle that it would have missed the 10 pin. So it would have rolled right on by the 10 pin, even though like my alignment and everything was fine. Yeah, having a spare release where we decrease all that rotation is huge for all spare shooting in general, but especially at the 10 pin, because people struggle at the 10 pin because it's on the corner, right? We can't hook the ball because it'll hook past it. And if we try to go straight and hook it into it, we're gonna go in the right gutter. So people get this over under on trying to pick the 10 pin. So the spare release, decreasing all axis rotation, just going straight at, for you, it ends up being a little bit of a backup ball, which is fine. That's gonna help us keep that angle straight right towards the 10 pin. So this is, everything else is the same. All we're doing is changing the release. Same ball, same everything. So you can actually see, and that's kind of my point, is I missed farther left on that spare shot. That spare shot was going down the lane farther left than the other one. That one would have hit the 10 pin, the other one wouldn't have, simply because of where my hand position was and the roll it created on the ball. Yeah, you're giving yourself so much room to utilize that right 25% of the lane like we talked about because of the angle your ball is taking in there. Your ball is constantly always going straight. It's not hooking away from the 10 pin, which is going to make that, that whole area down lane seem so much bigger. Yeah, if you take your 25% down lane <clears throat> and you take a ball and spin it away from it, then the odds of you getting it in that 25% <laughs> down the lane, they go down tremendously. That's why high rev guys, they have to have plastic. We watched Simonson bowl a two ball tournament here without plastic and he struggled. Because for one, two handers, they don't practice not using plastic. So if they don't have plastic, obviously it's going to be hard, they don't practice it. But especially for a high rev guy, Plastic is a necessity. Yeah, if your ball is constantly hooking away from the 10 pin, and that's one thing we see a lot, even when people have uh, straighter balls like a plastic or a urethane, a lot of times they won't have that different spare release. And if you're maybe an older player or someone that has slow ball speed, if you still put your normal release on a urethane or plastic, that ball will still want to gravitate yes. away from the 10 pin. And I see this all the time where people struggle. They're like, man, I, I'm using my plastic ball. Yeah, but we still have too much axis rotation on that ball. If we put no axis rotation on the ball 
and we have that spare ball, that ball is not gonna hook away from it. So those are two things that we really need to work on is making sure you have that straight ball in your hands yep. and you create that spare release where there's no axis rotation and it's going straight. The third thing we're gonna talk about, and this is probably the biggest issue people have, is alignment. Now Brad, when we talk about alignment here, I wanna go through where you align and then why alignment is a big deal on trying to pick the temp in. So first off, where do you align? So I stand uh, as far away from the pin as possible. And throughout all of my bowling journey, um, I've stood in all different kinds of places. I've, I've watched pros on short patterns go up the left side on like four pins, like directly up the left side on fours and sevens because they could just get it to like kind of hook in. And then I've seen people do all different kinds. I've trialed them all. And my thing is on a 10 pin, I'm gonna hug against the ball return and I'm going to increase the amount of angle as possible. Now, if you're spending most of your time bowling, like kind of over here on the right side, being a little bit straighter of a player, if you were to jump all the way over here and then try and accurately hit the 10 pin, your alignment's probably going to be off. It's probably going to feel like you have to throw it too far to the right because you're standing so far away from the 10 pin that it just makes you feel like oh wow, I'm pretty far away from that 10 pin, I'm gonna have to throw it to the right, and then you throw it in the gutter. And it's just figuring out which alignment you need, especially if you are all the way over, which I recommend, and I think both of us would recommend. Like, yeah, absolutely. Try and increase the amount of angle at it, that way you deal with less uh, broken down oil, you deal with less traffic, you get over here where most of the oil is, and then you basically just throw a straight ball. If you were to throw a straight ball from all the way over here, it's possible, but I'm telling you, that gutter doesn't feel very good when it's that close to no, you. Like, it if you have to hit a pin that's hugging a gutter, and then now you're standing there, and like your feet are almost hugging the gutter, you're like, mm, this doesn't feel like 25%, you know, that gutter's no. right there. So you get all the way away from the gutter, and then you hit a beeline straight at the corner pin. Yeah, and not to mention there's more friction on the right side of the lane, so we wanna use that oil in the middle part of the lane. Now, I think when we talk about alignment, we should come up to the approach, and this is really where we wanna focus on. So I think if you're someone that is struggling with your alignment, first off, I, we want you to throw a shot, and you need to see where you end up on the approach, because this is where we need to see, okay, if, and for the sake of this video, let's say I'm standing super far left, and I'm ending on 35. So if I'm on 35 here, I wanna actually get up here on the approach and be like, okay, where do I need to look at the arrows to make sure that I am drawing my straight line to the 10 pin? Now for me right here, if I was in a full shot, this would be right around board 24 or so. Somewhere in that area, you know, it kind of depends on you know, maybe how far away the ball gets from your ankle, if your ball, if you're not have, have it tucked super close, um, a couple things, but you're gonna be around that 25 area. Now, one problem that we see a lot, and this kind of comes from when people aren't used to being this far left, is we'll see them end up super far left, but they're looking too far right. So if I was standing here, and I'm someone that looks at 15, 16, 17 even, to pick my 10 pin, well back there it might look okay. But when I get up here, and if I'm finishing here, if I hit 15, 16, 17, that ball is gonna go straight into the gutter. And we see this all the time where people just aren't looking in the right spot. And then if you're someone that's doing that, well, subconsciously, your body is saying at the release, this ain't gonna work. So you're gonna have to auto-correct somehow to try to get that ball online to the 10 pin. A little bit of the reason why alignment can be so important, and I know it is, like for me, the way I figured out my line was just trial and error. You go up there, you shoot it, and if it misses to the right, well, then it, you know, it makes sense if we just kind of angle our body a little bit left, give it another shot, see if it hits 10 pin, if it still misses, right, well, let's just see. You know, you're, you're literally just trial and erring your alignment. But the reason it's important is because once you get it, and we've spent some time around the best bowlers in the world, once you get your alignment and you get comfortable with it and you start getting comfortable with these 10 pins, you never change. No. Like, you, I mean, you could watch Belmo, EJ, all the best in the world. They'll miss nine, ten pins in a row. Maybe not nine. But they'll miss a couple of ten pins in a row or in a game or in a block. And it makes you think, like, dang, they don't miss very often. 
they're not changing the way they shoot that 10 pin the next time. They're just gonna keep shooting it until they make it because they know that that's worked for 15, 20 years. There's no point in changing all of a sudden when they've been great at spares. They just had a couple bad shots. But in terms of alignment, once you get it, it stays the same. Nothing really changes. It's just about executing at that point. So now we're gonna give you guys a drill on executing and working on your alignment. So Brad's gonna throw out a couple 10 pins here. And the point of this drill is going to be working on aligning, being able to align correctly and from different parts of the lane. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw two or three shots here and Brad's gonna to try to pick a 10 pin from multiple uh, parts of the lane. This is gonna A, make you practice your straight release because the further right that he's gonna be trying to pick this 10 pin, he's gonna to have to make sure that release is dialed in or else the ball is gonna get offline. He's also gonna to have to practice his alignment so that way he can get trained to be like, okay, if I need to pick the 10 pin from second arrow, I can stand here, look at second arrow, I'm practicing my, I'm working on my alignment. Okay, I can, you can get into that alignment quicker. Or, or, you know, and then we're gonna move 10 boards to the left and then he's gonna have to transition his eyes where his feet are moving and make sure that he's aligned to that 10 pin. And this is gonna practice, help you align to whatever's out on the lane. That way, you know, for whatever reason, you have to change up strategies or, you know, just practice overall alignment. You can get into your alignment like that from multiple parts of the lane. All right, so I'm gonna get lined up uh, a little bit farther right on the lane than I would normally be comfortable doing. And just thinking about it, I already know that even if I get dialed in and lined up and I get to doing it repetitively, if I had a really important spare to shoot, <laughs> I still don't want to shoot it from this part of the lane. I still want to go as far over. The other thing is, is this can also be a fairly good drill that my coach Jazz now has told me to do, and that's stand as far right as you possibly can and then try and pick the 10 pin off clean. So take a full rack and try and get the ball to be outside of the five board the whole way down and then pick the 10 off clean. That's just an alignment drill. It'll teach you where your hips really are, if the ball's going directly right off your hand, yeah. that kind of thing. But let's, um, let's try and shoot a 10 pin. I guess I'm gonna like hit 10 and then we're just gonna try and, at this point, there can be no rotation going to the left. It's gotta be dead at the 10 or ba a little back up. And that's gonna be good. <laughs> that's pretty good. When you're dealing with a pro, you're dealing with a pro. <laughs> I still don't feel comfortable doing that. I would not wanna do it again. <laughs> so the goal, the goal here, and obviously we hit right when we were looking at, we picked the temp in. That was perfect because we picked the 10 pin clean off. When you're doing this drill and you can't just set up a 10 pin, if you hit the three pin, and obviously it'd be vice versa for a lefty, if you hit the two pin for a lefty, you should count that as a miss. Even though there's times where if you're doing everything correctly, you could hit the three pin and still pick the 10 pin. But for the sake of the drill, if you touch that three pin, we're gonna count that as a miss and you should too, just to make it a little harder on yourself. So now Brad, we picked, we were around 10. Now I just want you to move your feet like seven left. Yep. And we're gonna be probably somewhere around third arrow. Yep. And let's see if we can pick 10 from there. So that would have been a miss, considered a miss, I guess. Why? Because it, it nailed the six right on the head, right? It did, yeah. I don't know if you would. I think you would have picked it. Oh, you, it would have hit the 10. You would have picked right, it, but you right. wouldn't have hit the three pin. Okay, yeah, sorry. I thought you were saying No, six. no, no. Oh. I don't want to make it that. I mean, you could take it there and make it that hard where you can yeah, only the, hit the yeah, 10 Definitely pin. the three I pin. I guess you can do that. But <laughs> if, generally, if you hit the six pin and you don't hit the three pin, you're going to pick it. Unless you, unless something crazy happens and right. you have rotation yes. on the ball and all that. Yes. So we'll count that as a make for right now. And then now we're going to throw another shot. We're going to move further left. This is probably around your actual yeah, and 10 pin shot. I guess my feet are gonna slide around like 38 right by the left gutter and my ball's probably gonna hit 23 24 with the arrows so that's my normal line my hand comes right up the back right at the 10. nothing to it beautiful so so we see when, when he's doing this drill nothing is changing with our release you know, the ball, we're keeping the ball the same. 
We're keeping our whole idea the same. We're just changing where we're shooting the 10 pin. And now Brad can really work on it and he can tell if his alignment's dialed in because if I give him a challenge and say, hey, you gotta pick the 10 pin, you gotta look at board 10. Well, now his alignment's gotta be dialed in so he can automatically be like, all right, I gotta move my feet here. I gotta look here, keep that release. Now you're, now you, when you practice this and you can pick like a 10 pin or any pin from multiple parts of the lane, now you have your alignment dialed in and you can take that forward and, and play that, any part of the lane. That's an important part is practice. You know, that's a big part of it is, you know, we can sit here and tell you that like your alignment's important, but everybody's so different that you have to get to the bowling alley yourself and just try, like try and get all the way over here and throw it. And then if it's not aligned properly, then it's up to you to change your body it's not easy which is why you need to get in here and get the repetitions because once you get it it stays the same and it's very nice all right guys well i hope those tips gave you a little better ease of mind when picking the tempo remember you got 25 percent of that right part of the lane to pick a tempo for a righty to use it make sure you guys are having the correct ball in your hands get a straighter ball that's going to help you go straighter the right release and then work on your alignment make sure that you're lining up correctly get get to that foul line look where you think you should be looking and say hey if i draw a straight line from here to that 10 pin am i going to pick it and then just make tweaks off that until you get your alignment correct all right so we have a giveaway for you guys we have two packages one the brad and second the kyle you get a bowling ball wait wait, wait. why is the kyle the second Oh, because it's called the Brad and Kyle Channel, you know what I'm saying? I got to play this as long as go I ahead, possibly go ahead. can. Make, do your promo. Do your promo. <laughs> but we'll, we're going to pick two winners, and a winner is going to get uh, each package, a bowling ball, a signed jersey, and then one month free into our membership. So there's going to be two winners. Make sure you hit the link in the description and get signed up. It's going to be awesome. Thank you for watching the video. Go work on your spares. We'll see you later.